Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Worldwide Weather Watch. Today is March 14th, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see the intertropical convergence zone and thunderstorm activity across the maritime continent, Southeast Asia. But if you go a bit further north, you can see the jet stream coming off of the continent of Asia, moving out into the northwestern Pacific. There's a mid-latitude cyclone north of Japan. Pan right there, and you can see this jet stream ripping all the way across the northern Pacific is pointed at the west coast of North America, and to the very far right, you got the Hawaiian Islands. So the biggest, baddest storm right now is across the lower 48 of the United States, and you may say, what in the world are you showing me here? What is this yellow emerging across Texas? Oklahoma and pushing off to the east. Well, that is blowing dust, folks. And I'm going to show you more on that here in a moment. And we're going to talk about the storm in a little bit of detail. But let's go over a couple other things first. So looking at across the dynamic tropopause pressure, the northern latitudes here, there's the southern hemisphere, and you've got your jet streams way down across the mid-latitude cyclone regions. And you've got the deep moisture there across the equatorial Pacific. And if we put that into motion, you can kind of see the cycle of the planet there. And each one of these is a mid-latitude cyclone. Cyclone in both hemispheres right now. You know, we just passed in towards uh, into uh, the fall hem fall for the southern hemisphere. Yes, fall, and we just moved into spring here for the northern hemisphere. We're almost into astronomical spring here as we speak. But yeah, kind of an active time for both hemispheres as far as the westerlies and the mid-latitude cyclones are concerned. So warmest places on the planet yesterday, one of them was in Australia in Lullabor, almost 45 C, 113 Fahrenheit. And of course, Antarctica, the coldest, negative 84 Fahrenheit. Yikes. So Joint Typhoon Warning Center, we had talked about June in previous days, and you can see it came off the coast of, of uh, Mozambique and Africa there. It's moving back towards Madagascar. It'll be caught up into the westerlies and have its heat distributed across the southern hemisphere here over the next few days. And just a reminder, there are uh, the Central Pacific Hurricane Center, Eastern and Atlantic. I believe this doesn't start for the Atlantic until May 15th. Central Pacific, I think, starts on uh, June 1st as well in the Eastern Pacific. I think it might be May 15th also. But yeah, the National Weather Service is another thing that they do they do a very good job with this as well so just a heads up for that that will be coming up over the next uh two to three months now this is a, what's known as a i believe it is just a visible satellite imagery here i think they call this the geo color but you can see that the dust really coming across the region here. I mean, just some very intense winds. I mean, look at just widespread blowing dust moving all the way out now across eastern Oklahoma up into Kansas. And this dry line associated with this mid-latitude cyclone, pretty rare phenomena coming up. The dry line is going to be racing all the way out across the Ozarks. Just a very unique storm system. And it's going to have some big impacts as well. As you can see the Gulf moisture streaming up across the Gulf coastline there and back up onto the continent. It. That is going to be setting the stage for some very dynamic, severe weather here over the next couple of days. And this is another look at the Go 16. Again, blowing dust. It, great stuff here looking at what our technology has given us the capabilities to see. You can see the lenticular clouds rolling across some of the Rocky Mountains there as well. Some blowing dust even up into Colorado as we speak. Now this is Amarillo. Look at some of these gusts. The peak gusts were up to 72 knots approaching 80 miles per hour and it's been up there for a few hours now. Just extremely intense gusts. You see the haze and look at some of the reduced visibility no doubt to blowing dust. They're just calling it haze. Um, maybe a, a little bit more of a, a, somebody paying a little bit more attention as a weather observer might be classifying this as a dust storm here, but we've kind of cut back on this over the last few decades as well. But yeah, very intense weather going on. And again, you can kind of see, actually it went auto last hour as well. But anyway, uh, very strong winds across the region. And this is accumulated 10 meter max wind gusts. If I scroll through here, you can see how some of these stronger winds go all the way up towards, you know, even Chicago across portions of Illinois. But look at this swath of damaging winds up across Kansas. This is Missouri, back down across Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico, and this is already ongoing. And of course, Amarillo gusting to 80 miles per hour is already overdoing this, and no doubt some higher gusts mixing in elsewhere as well. Mm -hmm. So looking at relative humidity, let's play this through and let's watch this dry line stirring all this dust. Look at this move all the way out in the Ozarks. The Ozarks are there and it's foresty because it's usually very wet. And the dry line moving that far off to the north and east is quite a rarity. But you notice it doesn't make too much headway across the southeast here. Louisiana, Alabama, and portions of Arkansas. And that's going to set the stage for another round of some very dynamic weather tomorrow. We have a high risk, a rare two-day high risk. I think it's the first one 
Orleans in 2006, if I remember correctly. So very intense weather coming up. If you have anybody living in the Mississippi Valley area out here, Pay attention to what the National Weather Service is telling you. There are, you know, deadly storms potentially today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And also, look at this fire danger. I mean, I, I don't remember ever seeing this before. Isolated dry thunderstorms out into portions of Missouri, Kansas, and northeast Oklahoma. Just wild stuff and extreme fire danger. Includes Amarillo, Lubbock, Midland, Abilene, you know, all the way up into Oklahoma and into portions of Missouri and Kansas as well. What a dynamic storm. And this is the day two moderate. So you can kind of see the enhance goes all the way to Chicago. You've got Des Moines right there. There's uh, Omaha. There's Peoria. You got this is St. Louis is right in the smack dab. Kansas City is right on the the enhanced or uh, yes, the enhanced line there as well. And we got that 15 percent. And when you see the hatched hatched area, 10 percent greater probability of EF2 to EF5 tornadoes within 25 given miles of a point. So you're looking at potentially strong tornadoes in this hatched area. Again, heads up, this goes all the way down towards Jackson, just north of New Orleans for the best tornado risk today. And you can see all the areas if you want to you know, check out the larger population areas in these risk areas and great discussions with this as well. It's just absolutely potent storm. Now, this is the very uh, rare high risk day two includes includes Birmingham, Alabama, and yeah, you can kind of see where Alexandria is here. There's Greenville right in the enhanced. You see the moderate right down in Clips, New Orleans as well. Mobile right there, and some of the Florida Panhandle under the gun tomorrow also. And let me see if I scroll down here. Uh, some pretty dynamic wording in here. The significant tornado potential should exist all the way into Saturday night. Um, yeah. They will favor supercells. What else? I mean, you really have to be aware tomorrow, you know, if and today, because if you are out and about, you, you need to be checking in with the National Weather Service. Hope you've got radios out and about if you have gatherings or anything like that, because you really need to be aware. There's the talk of long track, discrete supercells, which could bring devastating tornadoes. So, yeah, EF3 plus tornadoes they even talk about here. The parameters are supporting that. So heads up for that. And if we take a look at the high resolution rapid refresh. So what we're looking at here is updraft helicity. These are where areas in thunderstorms are rotating. So it doesn't like it's not showing you tornado tracks, but the potential is there. You can also have some hail and some big wind associated, but you can kind of see the nasty look to things as we go through tonight. This is as you're going towards midnight now and you're going to the early morning hours. Some of that severe weather is still creeping east. And then like I showed you, the moisture isn't going to be displaced across the south. And then you get this next round of severe weather as we go on through tomorrow. And that's where that high risk is there. So yeah, you can see kind of the, the outline here there where the, some of the strongest updraft helicities are here over the next two days. And if we look at significant tornado parameter, of course, a combination of the moisture and wind shear without getting too much into detail, but you can see that significant tornado parameter up across Missouri, Arkansas, up into Illinois, from Tennessee and Kentucky there a little bit as well. So yeah, and then you can see it get redeveloped as we go on and through the day tomorrow. So yeah, high end stuff, folks, be prepared. If you got family or friends down there, get the word out and I'm sure they know about it, but you never know 100%. So lightning flash density potential, here we go. You can kind of see these storms and the tracks of these storms as we go through Saturday night. There's Sunday morning. It moves across Florida, Panhandle, Florida. Doesn't get caught up as much as what we talked about a couple days ago. So that's good. The flooding threat would be reduced because of that. But still, some of these intense storms could produce some local flooding, no doubt. And total precipitation in inches will scroll through this fairly quick. You can see some of the West Coast getting blasted there. And again, this is that mid-latitude cyclone spreading that moisture across the region. And this is the day three, some of the East Coast as well. A little clip across the Pacific Northwest also. And also looking at the, the CFS, just looking off at La Nina, you can kind of see it almost looks like a Madoki La Nina where you don't have the cool water. Like in a typical uh, La Nina, you got the cool water up the upwelling here and you know, we're not seeing that but we're seeing some cooler waters as we go off and towards the fall across where you do measure that so it may even be you know a, a chilly neutral or a weak la nina next year according to the cfs we'll see how this goes over the next few months but it's not a typical case and they call it the madoki because it's out over the central and doesn't have the upwelling along the coastline there so a little bit different and you can see this is now really starting to warm water here over the last 30 days. It's really been eaten away at some of the central uh, Pacific's cold water that we had um, that's bringing the La Nina conditions. The atmosphere still thinks we're kind of in La Nina right now. And you can kind of see that still in positive. We kind of reversed 
the 30 day trend a little bit and the 90 day trend. We've kind of leveled things out and started to climb a little bit more. So the atmosphere is still kind of showing that we it thinks that weak La Nina may still be around, but that will probably be changing here for the next month or two. And when you have the higher pressures here over Tahiti, lower over Darwin, that's when you enhance the convection over here, which is La Nina. And same thing with neutral, but it gets enhanced during La Nina and El Nino. It's kind of reversed that where you get the higher pressure over Darwin, lower pressure, deeper convection out over the equatorial Pacific. So yeah, fun stuff there. Anyway, if you guys know anybody out there across the eastern USA, hopefully they are aware and let everybody know. Um, otherwise, I'll kick this video out. Hope you guys are having a good day otherwise, and I will talk to you guys again in the next day or two.